بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين وخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وطبيب نفوسنا وشفيع ذنوبنا المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين لا سيما فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين من الأولين والآخرين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى تلك الدار الآخرة نجعلها للذين لا يريدون علوا في الأرض ولا فسادا والعاقبة للمتقين صدق الله العلي العظيم فاطمة الزهراء صلوات الله وسلامه عليها is the one of the best examples of this ayah تلك الدار الآخرة that is the life in the hereafter we have made it for those who do not want to be proud in this world in this earth and do not want to do any corruption well it is a human nature that the people want to be proud want to feel superior to others want to feel that they are something and others are below them but that is not the attribute of the pious people the people if they rule and control usually they do injustice and they start corruption maybe financial corruption social corruption well other types of corruption so that is the test in this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing the people here Ahlul Bayt salamullahi alayhim are the best example of those who if they rule they will not do any injustice to people and if they do not rule again they are not hopeless of the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not say anything wrong which is again against their high position they surrender to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well one of the tragedies that Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayhi has faced was usurping Fadak. Fadak was a land belonging to Jews, and the Jews were after Fatah Khaybar, after opening of Khaybar, they came without war and made a peace treaty with the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they gave him some of the land as part of their treaty so that he will accept them to be there and they should not get any danger nobody should attack them nobody should um, remove them from their place such cases where a land is opened without share of the Muslims that land will not belong to the Muslims to share it all because they have not fought for it and that is just like a grant or a favor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to his prophet. So, وَمَا أَفَاءَ اللَّهُ عَلَى الرَّسُولِ Whatever Allah has given his prophet, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so that belonged to the prophet himself. He can use it wherever he wants. And the ayah came after he got that land, that give your near kins his right. He asked Jibreel, 
who is the near kins and what is the right to be given to him. He said the near kins is Fatima and the right is Fadak. Give this Fadak to Fatima. So it was by order of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave the land of Fadak that was an agricultural land. There was a huge number of trees and has very good crops every year. And that was given to Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha. And that is on the seventh year of Hijrah because the battle of Khaybar happened on the seventh year of Hijrah. And after that, right away, those people came and they made a peace treaty and gave their land, some of the land to the Prophet, and the Prophet gave it to Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha. Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha, appointed uh, some people, farmers or people to look after the land and whatever income out of that land every year, annual income, was spent totally on the poor and needy people. So Allah knows that if we give this land to Fatima to Zahra, she is not using it for herself and not greedy, but ultimately it will go to the poor and needy Muslims. It was mentioned in books of history that one of the years Imam Ali السلام, came to take the money they usually used to, to sell all the trees at once, you know. Uh, not um, that, that they get the dates or other food and kilo by kilo, no. They sell it all to one person. So they said it was sold 40,000 dinar. 40,000 dinar was a huge money at that time because the price of a slave to buy it from the market was 10 dinar or 100 dirham. So equal that you buy 4,000 slaves. You can imagine uh, how much, how many million dollars equal of today's money. And the people of Medina, the poor and needy people of Medina, they hear that Imam Ali today had a good bargain and he has money and they know he is generous. So all were awaiting his coming and they are in, in his road. When Imam Ali came, he distributed that money equally among them all till he reached home that there was not a single dinar in his pocket. Fatima Zahra asked Imam Ali, have you sold the fruits of um, Fadak, he said yes. He said, have you kept anything for us from that money? He said, I feel ashamed from the eyes of those poor and needy. They look to me and I have something in my pocket and I am not giving them. So whatever was in my pocket, I gave it to the Muslims all. Because some of the Muslims, they used to be called Ahl al-Suffa. Ahl al-Suffa, there were about 400 people who came and they are so poor and needy that they have no house even, even a small cover to have a house, they don't have that. So their staying used to be in the mosque itself. They had no uh, other place to stay. And naturally the business was not there that they work. Well, sometimes they work, but whether they get money or not, there is no much work in that area. So let us say unemployment uh, was, uh, great, you know, because people who have land will cultivate their land, you know. Other business, those who have huge money, capital, they used to go to Syria and bring some goods and sell it and so on. But the rest of the people have nothing, you know. So they are, sometimes they work like a small labor and he may get a few dates to eat all the day with a few dates because he did a, a labor work. So with that number of poor people, and they know how, how much Imam Ali السلام, is generous, naturally they came in to his way and they asked him that, uh, well, you help us, so Imam Ali distributed all that money to them. So Fadak was in hand of Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha. It was her own property not a property of the Muslims and not even a property of the Prophet himself, 
sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, because he already donated that to his daughter by order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until the Prophet died at the year of 10th or beginning of 11th year of Hijrah, uh, the land of Fadak was in hand of Fatima to Zahra, salamullahi alayha. When the first caliph came into power, they knew that this land is very valuable, and if Imam Ali got that money, maybe with that money people will be supporting him, and he may come into power and the caliphate will be his right. So they tried an economic sanction against Ahl al-Bayt. So Abu Bakr sent some people from his side and he asked people who were from side of Fatima to Zahra working there, they asked them to leave the place. This is not no more under your control. It is under our control by force. They came to Fatima to Zahra and said, well, it is the government's order and they throw us out and they controlled Fadak themselves. Fatima to Zahra alayha, asked Abu Bakr about it, why you did that? He said, well, he related the hadith, and that hadith only Abu Bakr said. No one of the Muslims heard about it. He said, well, I hear the Prophet say that we, the Prophets, do not inherit uh, money to anyone. So the Prophet has no money, and there was no inheritance. That is not your right. Well, it looks that there were many times of negotiations. First time, Fatima to Zahra Salamullah alayha said it is a nihla. Nihla means a gift from the Prophet. First of all, well, Abu Bakr asked her that if it is gift to you from the Prophet, then who are the witness for you? You have to prove it. You see, this is in the court is wrong thing. First of all, Abu Bakr himself cannot be the judge and cannot be one of the parties who are disputed. So the dispute is with him. So he has to appoint somebody else to be the judge. Secondly, Fadak was in hand of Fatima to Zahra and her agent used to run it. If somebody has something in hand, they say, Aliyat Alamat al Milkiya, the hand is a sign that you are owner of what is in your hand. So Abu Bakr should bring a witness that this does not belong to Fatima to Zahra. Not to ask Fatima to Zahra who are the witness who can say in your favor that this is yours. Fatima to Zahra, this is say mine. If you claim it, then you prove it. Otherwise, it is in my hand. So everything in my hand, this is a general rule. If something in my hand, then that sign is mine. If you claim, then you have to prove it. Otherwise, whatever in my hand is mine. That is the general uh, rule in the uh, Islamic judiciary and probably all over the world, you know. It's a human type of judiciary. Thirdly, a woman like Fatima to Zahra, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned clearly in the Holy Quran that she is a purified, high purification. So a woman like Fatima to Zahra who are purified by Allah and will never go wrong and will never go astray, will never claim something which is not belonging to her, so actually to doubt that means you are doubting the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran says they are purified and Abu Bakr claim no, she may be right, may be wrong. So that is actually against the Holy Quran. In another situation, Imam Ali السلام, was asking people that if some of the Muslims came and were witness that Fatima to Zahra did something wrong. Will you punish her? He said, yes. 
said in that case you are kafir because you are against the Holy Quran. If you believe the Muslims and do, be, do not believe the Holy Quran, means you, you are not a Muslim. When the Holy Quran said Fatima al Zahra is infallible, you cannot believe any claim against her. Though in this case there was no claim except from Abu Bakr himself. But what I mean in principle, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that she is a purified, that Allah has removed away all types of uh, sins from you, O Ahlul Bayt, and purified you high purification. So if they are purified naturally, there is no possibility that they will go wrong. And that is not imaginable at all because Allah has purified her. So that is again against what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said. And the fourth point, that hadith was only related in history by Abu Bakr. There's nobody else here that hadith or even claimed that hadith. And it is very clear that that hadith is wrong because if the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was supposed to tell that whatever money I have will not go to my children, so he should tell his children and he has no one of his children except Fatima to Zahra, one daughter. So that hadith the Prophet should tell Fatima to Zahra, not tell Abu Bakr. What Abu Bakr has to do with that hadith? Abu Bakr is not inheritor of the Prophet, so that the Prophet is telling him, Oh Abu Bakr, if I die, you will not inherit me, because whatever we leave is for Muslims. So that is no point about it. So the Prophet should tell his daughter, Fatima to Zahra, alayha, that, okay, my daughter, look, the religious duty is that whatever money I have, it will go to Baytul Mal, so you will not inherit anything after me. So how come Abu Bakr, who is a foreigner, knows this fact, or claims that he knows this thing, and Fatima to Zahra does not know about it? How? So naturally, it is fabricated hadith, not right. And, well, well it is well, related to the Prophet, which is not true. And beside that point, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whose duty is to teach the people, literally, بَلِّغْ مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْكَ مِنْ رَبِّكَ So at least this issue, this mas'ala, he should have taught his daughter about it, not to forget. So, did the Prophet forget to tell Fatima to Zahra? Or he told Fatima to Zahra and God forbid, they claim Fatima to Zahra do not want to listen. How? How is that possible to come? So, you see, these are all points about it, you know, but still, Abu Bakr was not listening. First, he said, Fatima to Zahra said, it is, first of all, not inheritance, it is my property. Said, okay, bring a witness. And Fatima al Zahra brought Amir al Mu'mineen, Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, and Fidda, uh, and uh, Um Ayman, and she, they came to be a witness. He said, no, Amir al Mu'mineen is your husband, I will not accept. Well, very strange. Amir al Mu'mineen, Sayyid al Wasiyin, Waqaid al Ghur al Muhajjaleen, Imam Ali alayhi salam. If he is a witness for something, his evidence should not be accepted. And he say, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, they are children. Well, when the Prophet says they are Imam al Hassan and Al Hussein, Imaman, Qama, or Qada, both are Imams. Whether they stand or they sit, they are Imams. Do we have an Imamate? They are uh, age is high or small? Isn't it that? Some of the prophets were uh, a prophet at childhood, like Isa alayhi salam, and he talked and he said, Inni Abdullah, Atani al Kitab. And he, he was a prophet when he was uh, still a newborn. So the Imam is instead in, in, in place of the prophet. So Imam can be a child and he is Imam. So what is astonishing about it? So when the prophet said they are Imaman, and two Imams who are also infallible by ayat al tathir and still he refused them as a witness. 
And then he said, well, Ummu Ayman is a woman. We cannot accept the views of women. So it's not. Fadda Ummu Ayman, these are ladies who will not listen to their evidence. Then Fatima to Zara Salamullah insisted second time about it. Abu Bakr it looks was forced. He found that no option and he wrote a letter that Fadak land is belonging to Fatima to Zara. She took it. At that time, Omar was not there. By the way, before she goes home, Omar came and he heard, well, there is a session and something is there. Probably some people have told him. And he asked Fatima the Zahra, what is in your hand? She said, this is a letter. Abu Bakr gave it to me that Fadak is mine. He said, okay, show me that. She showed him, he took it and turned it and threw it out. So that was another injustice done to Fatima to Zahra. And then Umar came, I don't know. The caliph was Abu Bakr or Umar. So when Abu Bakr do, if they say Abu Bakr is Ulil Amr, then Umar should follow Ulil Amr. Why he is not following his Ulil Amr, I don't know. And he came to Abu Bakr and he said, no, you need this money for armament, for government, for this and that. Well, before Fadak, the government of Islam was running very well and they had many wars and many battles and they progressed and developed a lot and there was no need for Fadak alone. Islam has expanded a lot throughout all Saudi Arabia and Yemen and Bahrain and all that area. So there was no need to usurp Fadak from Ahlul Bayt for the government money. And if really the Muslim government needs the money, Fatima to Zahra was more generous than anybody else to support Islamic government, if that is the issue. But as I said, it is very clear the issue is an economic sanction against Ahlul Bayt. So that they should not get money, will not get the strength, and they will be under control. So that one was rejected, and then Abu Bakr could not give that. Then Fatima al Zahra came and claimed, okay, it is inherited. If you say that it is not a grant, but it is inherit inheritance. So he related that hadith that the Prophet said, we, the prophets, do not inherit. And then Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha replied him in a, a long khutbah. She came to the mosque and with big number of women around her and they put a curtain between the men and the women. And then Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Aliha delivered very great khutbah is well known as khutbah al-fadakiyya. Uh, maybe, inshallah, if you got time in the uh, next sessions, uh, we go through the different parts of the khutbah one by one because it's very interesting in its meanings and need uh, a lot of concentration. But it is interesting that that khutbah was, the rawaya was related to people from Sayyidah Zainab, salamullahi alayha. Whoever related that, he related to this Sayyidah Zainab, salamullah alayha. Sayyidah Zainab's age at that time was probably five years, you know. And even Abdullah ibn Abbas, who was a great man and called Habrul Ummah, he said, Haddathatna aqilatuna, aqilatu talibin. Our great women has told us about that khutbah, and uh, he mentioned the khutbah. Well, in the khutbah, Fatima to Zahra Salamullah Alayha started with praising Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and then mentioning about philosophy of ahkam, of Islamic issues, why Allah order us to pray, why Allah order us to fast, why Allah order, order, ordered us to do jihad or hajj or zakat, and also about the imamate, how important it gave philosophy of all that, and that by itself is a actually unique way of discussing. Because rarely we find that a hadith which give reason why Allah has um, ordered the people to do any religious act. You say that Allah told you to offer a prayer. That's all. Why? There is no why. It's order of Allah. 
Fatima to Zahra say philosophy of that and its importance for the human being as an individual and as a member of the society. Some of the acts are important for the society, Muslim society. Some of them are important for the individual Muslims. So, so she talked about philosophy of Islamic issues. And then after that, she mentioned, she reminded the people about their life and their position before Islam, how they were uh, weak and divided and they were fighting with each other, killing each other, and they were eating the meat which was kept for a few days in sun till it get, you know, dark, they keep the meat. There was no refrigerator and there is no meat every day. So if they got a meat, they put it in sunlight and the sunlight will make it dark and it will remain for a few days. So they eat that type of meat and the water was not a clean water and they were fighting, killing each other. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved them from that a miserable situation by Islam and by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So she mentioned all that and then she turned away to Muhajirin and Ansar and to Abu Bakr that do you usurp me my right which Allah has given me? Abu Bakr said well I did not usurve it it belonged to Muslims and they know that this hadith is there. She said, Subhanallah, my father will not go out of the Holy Quran. The Holy Quran said, Waratha Sulaiman Dawood, Waratha Zakaria, etc. She brought all the ayahs about inheritance that the prophets will inherit whatever they have money to their children. So they said, the prophet cannot go against the Holy Quran. That is not possible to believe that. But still, Abu Bakr insisted on that. And she, she asked Muhajirin and asked Ansar about it. But no one has supported her. And that was very astonishing that she delivered such a great sermon, which is about 10 pages. That a great sermon of Fatima to Zahra with the, with the beautiful, eloquent, word, with the deep meanings. And still, the Muslims were so much under control of the rulers that no one dare to support her. So she returned back feeling uh, great injustice done to her and feeling sorrow and pain that no one is supporting. Till yesterday when her father was there, she had a big supporter is her father, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And today, those Muslims who claim they are followers of her father, they are Muslim, but they are usurping her right. And then she remained after that ill till the last day of her life that she saw the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in a dream and he told her, oh my daughter, today, tonight you are our guest. And she knew that this is the last day of her. She brought Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein and she washed them and changed their cloth and send them to the mosque so that they will not see their mother dying. And she sent Zainab and Umm Kulthum to relatives so that they will not see their mother. Only Asma was at the house. She went to the room and told Asma, I am reciting Quran and Dua. If you hear my sound is low, then you call me. If I reply you, then it is otherwise you know that I am dead. Asma said that I was hearing the sound of Fatima to Zahra reciting Surah Yasin, and then suddenly I saw that there is no more sound. I came to the door. I knocked the door and I said, Ya bint Rasulullah, oh, the daughter of the Prophet, but she did not reply. Second time, third time, till I came and found her that her spirit has moved to heaven. Inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي من قلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم أنا نسألك وندعوك 
ونتوجه إليك بفاطمة وأبيها وبعلها وبنيها والسر المستودع فيها أن ترزقنا من فضلك خير الدنيا والآخرة اللهم آمنا في أوطاننا ولا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة اللهم اقض حوائج المؤمنين والمؤمنات في كل مكان اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اشف مرضانا اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا اللهم سدد خطانا اللهم أصلح شبابنا وبناتنا اللهم ارزقنا من فضلك خير الدنيا والآخرة واجمعنا يوم القيامة مع محمد وآله الطاهرين صلواتك عليهم أجمعين وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات رحم الله من يقرأ الفاتحة قبلها صلوات اللهم صل على محمد وآله محمد بسم الله الرحمن